So what's the fetch? Watch today. This. Huh, 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 huh. There. Kim Possible! And it's an original Disney movie. Yes. It didn't show up in the theaters. It no. Probably should have. Straight to DVD. It probably should have. <laughs> um. Wait. What? Hold on. What are we talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Take one. Take take one <laughs> and a half. Action. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> what did we watch today? You should have read the com the titles already because we watched Game Possible. Yeah. Call me. Beat me. Woo. You want to reach me? It's awesome, Bam. and it is a straight to DVD or Disney no, original movie. Disney movie. original movie, so it <laughs> showed up on TV, TV yeah. movie. Yeah, on the and Disney Channel. Yeah, it's directed by two people, actually. Yes. It's Zach Lipovsky and Adam B. Stein. Stein? Stein. Stein, Stein is the correct way I to guess say that's that. how you say it. <laughs> I butchered it like a cow. Huh? Uh, Josh Cadigan actually wrote the script. Uh, the script was actually, the plot was actually pretty cool. Uh, it was, you want to describe it? Since it was your pick? It was my pick. It was his pick. Why, well, did, why did you pick it, by the way? Oh, yeah, I picked this because nostalgia. I was just roaming around, saw the DVD, came possible <laughs> live action. They did this? <laughs> I didn't know. I was a big fan of Kid Possible, the cartoon, when I was, you know, I was yay high. I was watching it. He was he was as tall <laughs> as I am now. <laughs> but, but when I saw the live action, I didn't know it was a thing. So I was like, we gotta watch this. And I really enjoyed it, I liked honestly. It. And I'm glad you picked it. Cause it was good. Okay. It was actually really good. <laughs> I don't disagree. So the basic plot of the movie is is of course Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable, the t dynamic duo, super spy team. Kim Possible, Ron Stoppable. Right? Hey. I'm Wapa. <laughs> 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 That's what I do. Booyah. <laughs> yeah. I can't do flips and sh <laughs> but I am possible. Hey, this is a kid show. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, I said the S. I'm sorry. Bleep Flips word. and butts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Poo? I don't know. Okay, well, what are you Anyways. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I was trying to say, yeah, Kim and Ron are a dynamic duo that fight crime and evil and put bad villains away and freaking Draco is back. She, uh, she go and her yeah she go busted she go. Draco out of prison Draken. she go huh? Draken. Dr. Draken. Draken and why am I she saying Draco because I'm thinking she man. go <laughs> Fuck, I'm tired Not I said kid show. and I said a bad word again I'm horrible at this I'm going to bleep out every last word thank you <laughs> Thank you for that, Jesus. <laughs> He's not going to now. <laughs> Just make it like <laughs> dolphin noises. <laughs> oh, hey, it's like, it's like flash the Disney logo over her mouth. <laughs> I will. That would be great, actually. Thank you for giving me the extra work, like you always do. I, <laughs> I mean, okay. anyways, have to do it. So, yeah. Draken uh, got busted out by Shigo from high security, a random. Was that winter prison cell? And <laughs> that, that freaking pairing was so perfect. Like, I mean, in the series, at, when watching it as a kid, they always played off of each other. But I swear, those two together playing off of each other was perfect mm -hmm. the entire it's, time it stayed true to the original cartoon yeah. as well like shigo was actually filing her nails in several scenes over the glove she was <laughs> <laughs> she was always giving soul source of sass and mm. i loved it power source for my revenge plot oh yeah it's in there oh there 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 it's over i can't reach it <laughs> Rolling over the eyes, those, just chilling. Those boots <laughs> that she was wearing 
I loved I'm... so much. I want a pair of those. I would be really scared to get kicked by those boots. I would want to get kicked by those boots. I probably would <laughs> want to be kicked. And you can bleep that out too. <laughs> Cut it. Take one. No, it's going in. You got to kick you fetish. Let, let the world know. Oh, damn it. Now I'm going to get kicked on the street. Yeah, but it's, it's just complete nostalgia. And oh. I love this movie. So um, one of my favorite things was the very first scene in the movie. Freaking Patton Oswald was a uh, professor Dementor. Professor and Dementor. he was freaking brilliant. <laughs> he played that freaking role so well. And he was just, oh my god, he was having a fun time with Why that. is it turning purple and glitter? <laughs> the slime is turning purple and glitter. I cannot take over the world with that. You cannot take over the world with the pink and the sparkles. Everybody will make the fun. How? They'll all be disintegrated. <laughs> well, everybody would be dead, so it didn't matter. <laughs> I don't care! <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful, and it was great. And I have really had a fun time watching it. Uh, I, definitely. Yeah, it was real good. It's a, a Disney original, so of course there was cheesy moments. And, oh, we're going to try to hit you in the feels, because that's what we do. But no. I hear I'm too, I'm too dead inside now to feel it. So, um, that's that my problem. It's not in here anymore. <laughs> like, oh no, she's sad and everything. And I, oh no, she's crying. And I'm like, eh. I told my backpack everywhere and everyone laughed. Like, that was just me being like of an emotional husk of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> to then anything bad about the movie in particular. So yeah, that's me and we had fun. It was, and it was fun. The, the actress, we just found out, the actress who plays Kim Possible, this was like her first major role and she did really great. Mm -hmm. Like That was pretty good, that was pretty good acting, that was pretty mm -hmm. good. Everything. I, I like this movie. I will I say, I did, I did too. Know. I did like this movie. I will say, I did have a little bit of a hard time with Ron's voice. Oh. It didn't. It didn't fit his face. Like I, oh, I know he was trying true. to. He was trying to get the. He was voice. trying to get the Ron voice from mm -hmm. the cartoon, but he really shouldn't have done that because it just it was throwing me off a little <laughs> bit. I was like, uh, uh that's not right. <laughs> Oh, this is impossible. We're both a little cranky after saving the world last night. <laughs> that's not what you sound like, so that's it. I like the voice. I like, I, me personally, I like the voice because they were trying to stay true <laughs> to the cartoon. So I liked it. So go over there, you negative. <laughs>
uh, when he was like 10 or something. Yes. Uh, and then does a, the, you know, because Disney can trademark doing this, so they do that anytime they need to make a computer. It's Jarvis it's slash Q. It's Jarvis slash Q. <laughs> so her and her best friend are superhero spies that can do anything. They can, can possibly... do anything. Okay. Yeah, you go, you got and, it. And, and they're renowned throughout the world for being superheroes? For you know, helping people. Okay, That's so what known for. so the new mission in their lives, the new the new uh, chapter in their lives is their freshmen in high school. So they get to high school, they meet all their high school fr well, people they're all that middle school friends, yeah. middle school friends, the their bully, the popular girl, all that stuff, and uh, Kim just can't can't get to class on time. Oh, you must be possible and stoppable. <sighs> you must recognize this from the news. Yep. I recognize you from this because you are late. And we meet one of the best characters ever. After Patton Oswald, we meet Mr. Cat Lover. Most brilliant. Patton Oswald. I love him. He is my soulmate. That's uh, that guy was amazing. Uh, I just want. I don't have the info on who that actor is, but I don't. But the I, character is Mr. Barkin, who okay. is a recurring character in the show. I, I want the world to know that you should just give up and have a life full of dread and love animals. That's the message I got, and I think that's appropriate. Illusion. It's best to abandon any hope of joy and find meager satisfaction in monotony. So after after uh, a horrible day at school, they meet a girl who is crying. Boo hoo hoo! Everyone makes she fun of her. She also had a bad day at school. She did have a bad day at school. Uh, and Kim says, "I'm gonna be a good person. I need to make her happy." They become best friends. She's almost one like him. It's almost like she knows everything about him. And she's, exactly. And it's not like every single person in the room is like, that's gonna be a bad guy. Totally call it. But it does move, so we get that. Uh, okay, trash trash guy kid. Then, after uh, after uh, she gets a makeover and destroys her beautiful hair, she puts on, she dons in the new uh, Avengers suit. And it's 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 a purple uh, Kim Possible cosplay. Which, if you notice at the beginning, the bad guys have purple straps. They did. Purple is evil. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's purple. I'm evil. My house. So. Uh, <laughs> so my show now. Uh, so after. Why uh, is compliment if he tells you to leave? Apparently, uh, if I tell you to leave, it's because it's a good thing. <laughs> I've been told so many times to leave. The fuck I don't ever leave. <laughs> The house. Uh, so they, they, uh, uh, do, 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 do. so it turns out that uh, um, slowly and surely the uh, purple Kim starts getting the spotlight for everything that's happening because she's just slightly better than than Kim 1.0, Tony Stark Kim. There you go. Uh, there you and go. Yeah, uh, so. okay, back on track. Back on track. Disney don't <laughs> sue us. They can't. They can't. Well, mate, actually, they can't. They can do <laughs> like they want. There's Disney. They're we will Terror win. Corporation in ties to earlier. We love corporations. Yeah. Corporations can right. be people. Starting okay. from this point right now, since we are completely off track, I'm going to um, have you edit this part out. Yes. Bill Eisner, fuck you. I don't know who that is. <laughs> but yeah, fuck that guy. Who's that? Okay. <laughs> Who's that? What are we doing? Who's president of Disney? Disney. Oh, okay. Well, um, so, wait. Uh, I hate that guy Purple Kim. Purple Kim, anyway, is slightly, Purple Kim is slightly better than Kim 1.0, aka Tony Stark. So, uh, this kind of starts getting into Kim's head because Kim needs to be the best. She needs to be good at everything. And she's slowly realizing that she can't. That's not who defines her. So this movie's really a good, I think, role model for people. For young especially, girls. Especially young girls, yeah. Especially young girls. Uh, tell them that uh, you can be anything you want and it's okay not to be the best at everything. Nana said, Nana said. Your actions aren't who you are. They aren't. What you do is not who you are. What you do is not who you are. Nana, I'm Kim Possible, okay? I'm a star student and I save the world. That's who I am. No, that's what you do. That's not who you are. That, I, in a way, I think this could also relate to, I mean, I, in a way that I understand it. Um, say you're uh, an artist or somebody in the creative field. You, th I mean, if you think you're good at something and you know, you go and you put it out there and then you find somebody who's better at it than you, then you're gonna be like, well, f this, this, then I shouldn't, I shouldn't be an artist. Your, your, your outlook, outlook, worldly worth does not define you? 
your mistakes don't define you. Wait, take a hit. We might, we might connect the dots. Like, no, no, I understand the message. I you just do. want to be able to say it in a Where? better way because how they said it's confusing to me. You will have subtitles at the bottom. It's not defined by what you do. But it, it is actually. Because literally, by, what you do defines who you by are. By your job. <laughs> <laughs> but that also kind of defines you. No, it doesn't. If you do nothing in this world, you're worthless. It's your That's actions. That's kind of true, actually. Uh, it's your actions. If you do nothing in this world, fuck you. Fuck you. Hippie piece of shit. Go get a fucking job. Fine. Jesus Christ. Get the hell out of my house. Get the hell out of my house. No. We're not done with the plot. Okay. So, okay, so impossible. Nana Possible is that your, your worst isn't defined by your actions. When you fail, that doesn't define who you are. You can overstep these things. You, you can you can excel past this. You don't have to be the best at everything. You don't have to be number one. And that's a good message, I think, in, in our society that is so competitive. Not be the best, but that's okay. Yes. It's okay to suck, kids. It's, it's okay to not be perfect at everything. The majority you of you do you suck. Will. After that point in, in, in Kim's life, Kim tries to, she's learning to accept this. She's learning to deal with, which is hard to deal with. This is, you don't instantly just snap out of the situation. You don't snap out of your, your head thoughts. So when uh, Purple suck. Kim was being awarded for being the best student that's ever lived in existence, uh, they get kidnapped. Uh, and Kim has a moment that she could either pass the dirty mop to her new friend or use dirty mop as a weapon. Didn't you hear them? It was a bow staff. It was yeah, it's a... called dirty mop. And in that instance, she said that she needed to get the glory. And that literally smacked her on the face. After realizing this and after her friend being kidnapped and having no choice, she did what she had to do, which was the superhero thing. They're literally having no other choice. No other choice. She, she she didn't do it out of her own free will at the beginning. No. She did it because she had to. Yes. It's literally the only reason. As horrible <laughs> robot. <Yes. laughs> so going to the lair, shenanigans happen. Shenanigans. They find a mole rat, which had no purpose. But mole rat because nostalgia. <laughs> the mole rat had no purpose. Um. Then they Too defeat bad. the bad guy. But at the end, because they have to have a, a uh, time. Say the mole rat had no purpose. The mole rat had, had only purpose nostalgic always purposes. A purpose. <laughs> beautiful nostalgic purposes. Absolutely. Robot Kim. Purple Kim turns out to be Robot Kim. And Robot Kim at the end is like, yo, I gotta stay here to prevent the explosion. That's her voice in the movie. And other Kim's like, uh, but no, uh, let's let's be friends and you can run with me. And she's like, but like, I gotta list out the D8. And <laughs> my people are getting mad at me. So, uh, which was stupid and they could have run away at any time, but uh, lip robot Kim decided that she needed to sacrifice herself for no reason. But hey, at the end of the day, they find her head. The decapitated head. <laughs> and I think the moral of this movie is, this is an actual thing to happen whenever, to whenever you find a decapitated head, talk to it. <laughs> um, and uh, they lived happily ever after. So, you don't always have to be number one. You uh, be proud of who you are. You will have ups and downs. You will get past this. And make sure to lift other, lift each other up. Lift each other up. Don't, just because someone is succeeding more than you are, uh, emotions and jealousy and all those things that come, do the greater good and lift that person up instead of letting that jealousy overtake you. Their jealousy is not taking away your spark and their, uh, sorry, their, their actions are not taking away your spark, they're not taking away who you are. Even if they're in your mind succeeding more than you are, you're still an individual and you're still worth something in this world. Spark. I want that spark. I really don't know what to say about this movie. I didn't grow up watching Kim Possible. Kim Possible.
I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't grow up watching the show. I mean, for the movie, I get it. The movie, again, Disney Channel original, it was meant for a, you know, for a younger audience. Not for me. I personally didn't get much out of the movie. Again, I'm biased. I don't care much for spy stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I just don't. It's not my cup of tea. Um, but from certain people showing me what the original animated show was, please don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm gonna buy every single episode and I'm gonna make you watch it. Oh god. Anyways, um, I can see that they actually did try, like, to get it close to the original source material. So props on that. Props on, and this is a, another big pet peeve of mine, uh, especially when it comes to movies that have freaking high school and getting actors or actresses that are in their freaking 30s. Yeah, absolutely. So unrealistic for the kids. I mean, again, props to actually getting kid, you know, actors and actresses that actually look to the age. Mm -hmm. Good job on that one, Disney. Yes. I think one of the funny things about this as we were, you know, preparing cuz we do that. We legitimately prepare for these reviews. Um, there's a real big disparity on some of the ratings for this guy. Yeah. yeah I mean, when looking at up... Some people love it, some people hate it. As you can see, our group is kind of made up of that, too. <laughs> well, looking it up and seeing what IMDb had a four... Was it four, either a 4.6 or 4.4 out of 10? Yeah. But then Rotten Tomatoes, it was 100%. 100%. I'm pretty certain... Strange. That it was either Disney having their own reviewers going in there and trying to boost up the rating for it I or it was the story is never trust rotten tomatoes imd got it wrong it was a 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 hell or overlord it was actually a lot either that or a lot of original fans of the show liked yeah. it well and here's the thing i've watched the show i wasn't an avid watcher of the original animated show but I did find myself laughing a lot. There were a lot of funny jokes. The characterization, I think they took it one step further than what they could normally do in a cartoon. I feel like some of the Shigo was awesome. Yeah, she that character was actually entertaining. And that's the other thing again. Real good then lines. Having like some actors and actresses that I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And again, for a Disney Channel original movie, they actually did really good. And it's funny when they were like, oh, well, this movie is one of the worst rated Disney Channel original movies. The thing that I don't believe has been said yet is the Kimitation. That's a word. The Kimitation oh my God. was pretty successful. And then she, like a you know, caterpillar coming out of the cocoon, became her own butterfly of a person, a robot person person that's a, good, that's a good message cyborg whatever you want to yeah. call it you can Robots you can people too you can be a person <laughs> and people can grow and get better and not be jealous and enjoy all of their imitations robot life matters <laughs> yeah <laughs> the technical boys we 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 the technical boys technical boys uh if uh, jeremiah would shut the f what <laughs> Thank you, Lee. So, um, oh my god. Hi! Hello! We are speaking. It is our oh you so fuckers are fucked. I can't work like this. I'm so stressed out. I know that we said that drinking might be a good thing in these shows, but it's fucking not. <laughs> Jess, I need you to leave. Cut it for us. My house. <laughs> now, technicalities. Technicalities. Okay, so. Let's talk about lighting because we fucked up. <laughs> Choreography. Choreography. Choreography felt very cartoonish to me, which yeah. I enjoyed because it, it felt like this was the actual show. Yeah, the I enjoyed flips, it. Flips, yeah, the thing. over. And you said that she just constantly does flips on the she show. She does flips, she does cartwheels. She's a cheerleader that's, in the show. That's awesome. That, like, yeah. it, it, 
the CGI was kind of eh, but at the same time with the budget that well, it wasn't there. That's about old. top notch for a Disney Channel original movie. I, I agree. It, it, it's this the uh, with the budget they had with what they were trying to depict, the housing looked like to me looked bad, but apparently everyone loved it from the show because it, it looked just like the. Yeah. house in the show. It did. Uh, uh, the, the voice acting, despite someone's opinions, uh, I thought was great. It was very cartoonish. It fit them. It, it didn't... Their voice acting did not impede their physical movements nor their actions, and it was taken seriously by everyone else. I'm stuck here thanks to you. But I have you in my grasp now, and there is no escape. Uh, I think the major villain was Draken. Holy <laughs> Dr. Dranzel. Draken. Uh, Dr. Dracula. I thought uh he wins MVP of the movie. I thought That husband. that guy really brought it home. Uh I had his name but I forgot it. I, I'm yeah. so, sorry guy. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 dude. Sorry. Uh, the actor did a fantastic job. I think he 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 pulled off the characteristics of a cartoon villain amazingly. And it, I think it's really hard to convey that. Um, Especially in a, in a show or a movie that's geared towards children. Yeah. You, it can be, it's like you can do over the top and then it just comes out utterly ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he, he did, a, yeah. it was ridiculous. But with ridiculous but with the purpose, and it, and entertaining it was, was definitely the purpose. Um, Todd Stashwick, Todd Stashwick, who uh, portrayed the role of Doctor Draken. Thank I, you so the much. The makeup was done great. Set was amazing. Set was good. Set felt like a cartoon show. The layer felt like a cartoon layer. Uh, the big uh, MacGuffin of the movie was. A D8, so it was just a crystal. It always is. It, it, it's that's that's fantastic. It was a spy movie with the heist and a double cross. Yes. Perfect, perfect check spy and movie. Check. Uh, that's they. I think the writing was extremely kiddish. Uh, it, it made me laugh, and I came in wanting to hate this. I, I think I might be a fan of Kim Possible now. You're gonna watch the show? No. <laughs> Uh, but I like it. <laughs> I need this bit to stop because it's, it's, because it's impeding on my life. <laughs> You're distracting the actor. Can I'm you? going to deduct your pay. We get paid. You pay him? That's my cue to leave. Wait, you pay him? <laughs> I don't know how Kim Possible is in the show, but I think that they, they made the movie and wrote it in a way that it makes sense for kids in this in 2019. That did work, actually. Yeah, that actually Insta did work. Yeah, the Instagram stuff, blogging, taking selfies. Uh, I think that works well with... And it wasn't overdone in a way that it was distracting. Yes. No, it, it was just, yeah. it felt like a natural thing. It, it was part of like every single, when the fight was happening in the school, the students had their phones out. A phone is a major part of people's lives. And if you say anything negative about it, phones are amazing tools. They are distracting, but they're also amazing tools. And I think this movie captured everything about that pretty well. And considering with how things are now, it's very, um, there's a word, it's, it's, it's uh, vital almost yes. to somebody that's growing up nowadays that they need to have a phone on them. I completely agree. Like that, it's, it's kind of like their outside connection, it's their way of connecting with people. Yeah, it's their way of connecting with people. Yeah. It is what, as this movie's trying to say, the cell phone is your worth in life. You're How nothing without a cell phone. You're nothing without a cell phone. How many followers do you get on Instagram? You got the fucking iPhone 10? You don't? You're worth shit, man. Shit, man. Shit. Shit. Fuck you, kid. <laughs> Fuck you. How about the, uh, the, I just wanted the, to. I just. Sorry. I thought I was brought on here because you wanted me to talk about my favorite childhood show, but. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for ruining my childhood. Let's praise. <laughs> I'll, I'll hail the overlord mouse. Hey, uh, we just watched Kim Possible. And in honor of that, I actually made Ron Stoppable's favorite bueno nacho food, the Naco. Video coming out soon. Watch it. Like, comment, subscribe. Call me, beat me, if you, you want to reach, reach me. me.